So we're going to start looking at probability of independent events. And just a reminder what independent events are. They are events that are not affected by previous events. So the probability of one event doesn't affect the probability of the next event. Okay, so the probability for the example I gave here was the probability of the next coin flip does not depend on any previous coin flips. Okay, so a dice roll, coin flip, these are in what we call independent events. One does not affect the other. So what's the probability of rolling a number four on a six-sided dice and flipping a heads on a coin? Okay, well we can this is a two event probability, so we can, you know, draw our sample space out for this. Okay, so we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, as possibilities for a dice roll. And for our coin flip, we can have heads or tails. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to know what the probability is rolling a four and a heads. Okay, so if we look at that, this is four and heads. Okay, so this one event out of possible one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's going to be, the probability is going to be so probability of four and heads is going to be one out of twelve. Okay, so we've done this before with a, with a sample space, but we're going to try this slightly differently. So it, what we could do is, we can do this. So this works with consecutive events, okay? And when we deal with independent events, it's very, it's very nice because we know the probabilities of the events and we don't have to worry about the order of things happening. So we can do it in a slightly different way. We can multiply probabilities, okay? So it looks like this, the so probability of heads, and number four can look like this. The probability of heads times the probability of rolling a number four. So the probability of heads is one half and the probability of of rolling the number four is one out of six. And we can see that because these are independent events, we can actually calculate the same probability by multiplying these two probabilities together. So these are equivalent. So this is the main idea is that we, although this is the most reliable, so when we can see the sample space, that's always gonna be the most reliable way of doing it. It does, there are ways to deal with these types of consecutive event probabilities where we could actually multiply probabilities together.